Good morning. It's 6, 11 a.m. and the sun is just rising over the Sac Zimbog and we're heading out for virtually live field trip in the bog number two. Going through this farmland here on 29, 229, three deer. Just kind of scanning for any magpies. You know, this is the furthest east population in the United States of magpies. And a little bit of an isolated population. Uh, but they like to be around farm animals. And, um, yeah, I don't see any right now. Well, I think the first thing we're going to do this morning is actually look for great gray owl, a spot where great grays were seen in the late winter, uh, which maybe they're nesting in that area. We'll check it out. Oh, 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 there's a great gray. There's a great gray. Just dropped down. I didn't even see him. He blended right in to these alders. I'm gonna get out and take a look. Birds no reverse, so don't just don't just reverse to see a bird. You should turn around. I don't know how they know what reverse means, but they seem to. So I usually just go up and then turn around ways down the road. I'm just gonna, I've turned around. I'm a ways, about 100 yards from where I saw the Great Grey, and I think I'm just gonna hang here a bit and see if it pops back out. Yeah, this is why I don't guide anymore. I don't spot things till they fly away. Well, I waited here a while and then cruised down, just slowly walked down the road. But no sign of the great gray. But gee, it must have been almost eye level. Uh, oh well, well, we'll try and cruise back here a little later, not too long, because they don't hunt on a sunny day like this much after sunrise. So um, we'll just do a loop. And uh, yeah, but just good to know they're nesting right around here. Okay, finally have cranes. <laughs> didn't get any last week, or we heard some, but didn't see any. So I finally have two out here. Actually, I'll take some video out the window first and then try and sneak out and get uh, the, vid the tripod set up. It's 20 degrees this morning, but uh, there must be enough thawed ground. They're getting some kind of worms or something out of the the field here that's a phoebe look at it pumping its tail it's our first fly catcher to return to the north woods well that was a good stop oh i just heard a flicker had a couple fox sparrows singing over there. Couldn't get them to come out. Uh, Ruby crowned kinglets right here. A blue jay doing its squeaky pump handle call. Robins. Chickadees. Uh, Yellow-bellied sapsucker doing the Morse code drumming. Da, 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 it's the only woodpecker uh, that does that. Yeah, good stop. Let's move on.
here on the bridge over the St. Louis River uh, along Arcola. Harry Woodpecker's drumming. And uh, there's a, several red breasted nuthatches and uh, white breasted nuthatch, which is not very common here. Uh, yank, yank, ing. It's recording some of the bird song and the, the woodpecker drumming over here. Uh, this is a shotgun mic. And this fuzzy thing is a dead cat, which filters out the wind noise. My kids call it a Yeti arm. Well, that was good. I was hoping maybe they'd break into their courtship dance, but uh, no luck. Yeah, just nice to see a, a pair. Uh, and the crane population has been increasing dramatically since the 1980s. I mean, when they were almost, you know, non-existent in uh, northern Minnesota, they've really made a huge comeback. And they're, they're an early nester, so they, they're probably getting ready to nest soon. Uh, and one cool thing they do is, you know, in the winter they get quite gray as they molt, but uh, up here um, they, they'll take mud, this iron-rich mud and muck, and rub it into their feathers, and it stains their feathers that, that rusty color, and uh, they think it helps with camouflage. Um, but yeah, kind of a cool behavior. That was pretty <laughs> darn cool. Except uh, when I got out of the car, I forgot my gloves and it's still only in the low 20s and my fingers are freezing because I spent about half hour with a, a pair of snow buntings, uh, late snow buntings. And uh, you know, in the winter or fall, it seems like you can't get anywhere near snow buntings. They just, uh, you know, you stop your car, they fly off, but in the late spring, sometimes you get these straggling pairs and you can, uh, they're pretty mellow. And that's what happened today. I saw two white and black flashes fly up off the road. Uh, they landed in a tamarack and just sat there for a long time. And I was able to get pretty close. It was pretty fun. Nest up on the, on the tundra, on the high tundra. And so they have a long way to go hundreds and hundreds of miles to get up into northern Canada and Alaska. So they are on their way. Um, so let's go check Stone Lake, see what kind of ducks we can find and see if the ice is off yet. Look at the beautiful yellow underwing color uh, from the yellow shaft of the feathers. And you can even kind of see the white rump as it flies off the perch. This was my trigger bird when I was 14 years old. I looked out our suburban front window and uh, saw this crazy bird with spots and stripes and red and black and yellow. And uh, What is that thing? Because it wasn't acting like a woodpecker. And I looked it up and I'm like, wow, I wonder how many other types of birds are around here and so I started basically collecting birds because I was a fanatical collector of things um, and I tell this all the time but my room was filled with junk and you know, baseball cards, bottle caps, bottles, beer cans, barbed wire and those are just the bees. I collected everything and birds became another collection uh, but it evolved into more than that. amount of ice. Well, that was pretty good. Yeah, Stone Lake uh, wasn't too bad. A lot of ring neck ducks, golden eyes. Um, once again, no swans. Um, uh, but wood ducks on the way in, still paired up, male and female. And two northern shrikes, including one I just got 
video, slow motion video of catching something small on the side of the road. <laughs> I have to check the video to see what it was, but it was not a vole or anything like that. But uh, um, yeah, that was kind of cool. Well, I think we had a another fantastic field trip in the Sac Zimbog. Thanks for joining me, Sparky Stensauce. Uh, director of Friends of Zach Zimbog. And superstar bird of the day has got to be the Sandhill Crane. Had some cooperative pairs and uh, they were preening and they were feeding. Stay tuned. Next week we are going to make a big announcement about Wainerberry Bog and I uh, want you to be a part of that. So we'll do that on the field trip. I think next week we'll head over to Nichols Lake and the ice should be out and we'll see what kind of uh, ducks come in. What is that? That is a turkey vulture. That is a bald eagle. See, I told you I don't guide anymore. I don't know my birds. All right, take care, have fun, stay safe, happy hunkering. See you next week. Mm -hmm.